Today on In the Woods Yard, we've got a delivery today. It's for one face quarter, one third of a quarter, one rick or one roll. We're gonna fill up the bed of the truck loosely and that will equal one face cord or one third of a cord or one rick or one, ro one roll or one rank. I've heard that too. So this pile right here is a pile that I, I think we cut and split this back in like December, January, somewhere in there. It was middle of winter, I remember that. And this was all tree service wood. There was originally 60 face cords or 20 full cords in here, give or take. It could be 10 either way. I didn't really measure it, we just threw it in. But I just know because of how many trailer loads fall and how many we fit in a trailer, just a guess that's how much was in here. Now I've already sold about half of this and there's still a lot to go. And this was the pile that everyone was worried about being moldy and rotten and all that. Well, I've been down into the bottom of the very middle. No mold whatsoever, no moisture whatsoever. Everything is on pallets. It's all pallets around the outside here. We made it nice and high and this dried awesome. This was excellent wood. I've done moisture tests on this. There is maple, there is ash, there is iron wood. There is a little bit of elm and a little bit of apple wood is in here. So it's all in the teens, 15 to 17%. Uh, so it's really nice dry wood. So that's what's going to go in here. And this, like I said, was all tree service wood, 100% free. I'm going to take you over for those of you that haven't been around a while and show you another one of my piles of tree service wood. So there you go. That's, that's what I've removed from it. You can see what was taken away and we still got a bunch of it to go over on this side. Now this pile over here, also free tree service wood, 100%. The only thing I paid for this for was sweat, time, and some fuel for processing it, for cutting it, and uh, making it into firewood. So that's another one. And then I've got more over here of tree service wood. And the reason I'm bringing this up today is guys have been asking me, like, you know, how do you get all your wood? Well, I get some of it from tree service companies. I get some of it by going to woods and cutting, and I get some of it um, from people that just bring it to me or people that say, hey, do you want a tree? Uh, some of the stuff we've gotten this year from doing tree jobs where we've cut the trees down, where I've helped Adam and Bert and Gavin and Keith and people get their, rid of their trees that they don't want dead and dying ash trees and elm trees. I help them do a video and I get the wood and they get paid for doing it. So everybody wins and the homeowner gets a good deal. So this entire pile right here is all tree service wood. I do not know how much is in here, but if I had to guess, just a guess, seven, eight full cords, I don't know. 20, 25 face cords, thirds of a cord, whatever. And all of this is tree service wood that we got from jobs that we did. So this all needs to be done. And all that over there, all free wood. So for those of you that are saying, well, we can't get wood in my era. Yes, you can. All you gotta do is get to know the tree service people, offer to go pick up the wood if they won't bring it to you. They save money by not having to take it to a landfill. In general, it's 50, 60, 70, I've even heard $100 a ton to get rid of wood far as waste in a landfill. So you're gonna save them money if you can take it off their hands. The more convenient you can make it for them, the better. So they might bring it to you. If that doesn't work, go get it when they're doing a the job. Just say, hey, I'll go, I'll back my trailer up and I'll load it up. You don't have to do anything. They would appreciate that. It saves them work and hassle. So this load that I'm gonna deliver right now is gonna go into the truck and we're gonna go do a delivery. So empty, not very empty. We're gonna do some chucking right now. So I'm in the cage over here. You can't really see me, but I'm over here. And I backed up the truck as close as I can get. And I'm gonna put the wood in now. Something I'm gonna talk about is that a lot of people don't know how much wood a pickup fits. I get asked all the time. If I was to stack the wood across, side to side, stacked, level with the edge of the bed, it's about a two foot deep bed. I did three rows and then about a half a roll, it would be a third of a quarter of face cord. If I stack it completely full, stacked tight, completely full, stacked, it would be a half of a full cord or a face cord and a half. But I'm gonna throw it in loose and loose. You lose about 20, 25% volume capacity. So if I throw it in loose, if I put it level, 
it will be a face cord. I've done this literally thousands of times and I almost always have more wood than I should deliver by going just a little bit over level. Um, a lot of the people have racks that fit exactly a third of a quarter face cord that I put the wood into. And when I stack it for them, for people that pay me to stack it, it ends up being just a little bit above level at the four foot level. So now one of the other things I'm going to talk about is I am going to be gentle in throwing my wood in here. I'm not going to, not going to just chuck it. But one of the things I get asked all the time is how many windows have I broke out on trucks? I've been loading wood into trucks now for 50 years. Actually, I started when I was about seven and uh, helping my dad load wood. So I would say that was 54 years ago because I'm 61 and I've never broken a window yet. I haven't even come close. Neither of either of my brothers, neither is my dad. We've never had any kind of protector on there because we're careful in how we throw it in there. So you saw the first couple pieces I threw in very gently. Now the next few pieces I will throw in on top of those pieces like this because it breaks the fall so it's not going to dent the bed up tremendously. So I'm kind of careful in the beginning that I aim right into the middle onto the other pieces. And when it gets built up a little bit, then I can just kind of throw it into the middle and I'll fill it out. So this is right here, maple, elm, and ash is pretty much what I'm putting in there. So I just keep doing it this way. Then when I get to where I've got a little bit of a base built up, then I can just start chucking into the middle and it works out just fine. But if you throw the pieces, especially from farther away, you're gonna have them bounce and you can hit your window. The other thing I don't wanna do is dent up the back of my truck tremendously like a lot of guys do. My truck's dented, but not as bad as some of them I've seen. Uh, this truck I bought brand new uh, eight years ago. I've got 230 some thousand miles on it now. I've delivered thousands of cords of wood with it because that's what I bought it for. And it just keeps going. So I'm trying to keep it looking halfway decent. There are some dings and dents, but that happens. It goes with the territory when you're dealing with wood, you're never gonna have it perfect. Now, one of the things I'm gonna do is now that I've got it started where it's starting to be solid here, is I'm gonna start throwing pieces with a backspin like this. See how that just landed like that? And that's what I'm gonna do, and that way they won't bounce forward and hit the window. So I kind of give them a little toss like that, and they fall back this way. So from now on, that's what I will be doing. I will be throwing pieces of wood with a backspin. So they go in, see how they just fall right in place? Okay, now that's obviously extreme, but if I give them just a little backspin, that's all you need to do, and they fall right in. And if I'm throwing right at the edge of the pile on this far side, you don't really need to backspin them. Just let it hit the pile and they'll fall right back in, so. Yeah, if you chuck hard from a distance, you're gonna really dent it up and you could possibly break your window. But I just kind of, somewhat careful. But I can load this whole thing if I go fast, I can load the whole truck in five or six minutes. It does not take very long. Right now I'm just kind of taking my time so you guys can see how the wood falls. And do a backspin again, another one. See how nice that works? Look at that, and I threw it all the way up to the front. Now this one is gonna kind of slide in, and then this one. So I'm being kind of careful when I'm throwing them. I'm kind of aiming one at a time. I don't just throw like a crazed maniac. See, they're just falling nicely. No pain, no crying, no swearing. Well, maybe once in a while. But see, I'm just kind of throwing them in gently, but I throw basically one piece at a time. I'm almost like shot putting them in here. I'll go over there. I'm gonna fill the back end in here. This I can go a little quicker. This is like a normal loading speed here. Oh, 
Now some people say, this is a waste of my time. I should be getting a loader of some sort, but I've never had a customer yet that has asked me to deliver wood that has been ground into the dirt. And none of them want bark, debris, um, you know, rocks, mud, branches mixed in with their wood. People buy from me because the wood is clean. And I tell them I hand load it so that it's clean when you get it. And I've gotten a lot of customers because other people have loaded with a bucket and ground the wood into a big slurry of mud and rocks and stuff. All right. Oh, here's a piece of, piece of apple wood right here. Look at that one. That's apple wood. Here's another one you can run all. Yeah, it is. It's apple wood. Now I'm going to fill the front a little. And I'm just going to kind of slide them in and do some back spins here. And I'm not far away. I'm right by the camera off to the side here. I'm just a foot, a half, foot away or so from the back of the tailgate here. So I'm real close. Find if you stay fairly close, you can aim really well and get the wood in safely without damaging anything. That's a thing of beauty, I must say so myself. All right, it is in, and we're going down the road to do a delivery right now. So there it is, I'm kind of at the level of the bed here, trying to stay kind of even. And you can see it's just a little above level. Like I said, that ends up being a third of a cord or a face cord or a rick or a rank or a roll. It's in there, we're ready to go down the road. It's a thing of beauty, I think. No broken windows, it's still every time. I am back in the wood yard after the delivery and I just came over here to take a look at this beach because I was planning on doing some processing today, but look at this stuff, this is amazing. It's been here just for like a couple months. Look at these cracks all the way through and they run the whole length of the whole log. And if you look at some of the smaller stuff, same thing. Cracks all the way through right here. That's cracked right to the middle and then all the way through the whole piece. And if I come around to this side over here, and look at this one right here, cracked right down to the middle, all the way through. Now this is a piece of hickory, bitternut hickory, another one here. See it's cracked and it goes all the way through. Another piece of beech right here, look at that. The heartwood is actually cracked out away from it and that crack runs the whole length of it. That is awesome. So this stuff just in log form because we've had such dry weather this year and so little rain. I got a feeling this stuff is going to be dry. And tomorrow we're gonna to find out because I am done for today. Tomorrow, I'm gonna to process this wood. So come on back tomorrow. We're gonna to start up the big, big girl, the big beast. We're gonna process this. I might get it all done right away tomorrow. That's the plan anyway, so we'll see what happens. So the, tomorrow's gonna to be a day at the beach. That's all for today, folks. Go watch some other videos on my channel. There's 1,200. They'll be good for you. Good night, Irene. Mm -hmm.